G'day guys, Ron here from Oz1 Digital Marketing. Today I'm going to show you how to get out of the Google Sandbox. Uh, let's jump into it. All right, so you might be wondering what the Google Sandbox is. Well, essentially if you're typing in your website name or typing in the predominant service that you offer with your website and you're nowhere to be found, you're in the sandbox. Now, Google hasn't really said that this is a real thing, but we all know that it is, especially in the SEO game. The reason I'm creating this video is because I've actually had a couple of clients launch new websites, turned up and gone, all right, I want to go after this and I want to be ranking the exact same as this guy in the law game. Good luck with that. So that's the problem trying to explain to those clients that, hey, if you launch your new website, it's important that you take into consideration the sandbox. That period from Google sitting there being like, hey, what are you about? To being like, oh, I know that you're Osborne Digital Marketing. This is what you do. This is where you provide your service. Yeah, man, go for it. That's what it is. Today, I'm going to explain what it is. I'm going to give you a heap of tips that actually work to get you out of the sandbox and we'll run through them individually. So essentially, we've covered what the Google Sandbox is. Let's talk about the ways to get out of the Sandbox. Now, something that I really like, and we've tried it out a little bit, is this one right here, all right? This is the first tip that I have for getting out of the Google Sandbox. This is a tip right here. Let me add it right here. But up, bing, create at least 100 pages of content on your website. Yeah, seems like a lot. But that's exactly right. It seems like a lot. The average person in the average website is not going to have that. Google knows it. But if you start a website with 100 pages, that takes a lot of effort. Every single page is an hour's worth of work to upload, a couple of hours to create, if you do it the old way. Uh, it takes time. So looking at that going triple digits of pages on your website, in the eyes of Google, that's quite serious. Now, does that mean if you're in even a low competitive niche with 100 pages, you're just going to go in there and pop straight in? Absolutely not. You're still going to be impeded by that sandbox effect because what right do you have? And if you think about it this way, how crazy would we all get if other people went around and started creating the same services, even business names as us, and then started to rank for that? We'd all go bananas. So Google is actually looking after us and doing the right thing by actually sandboxing people. I personally think it's a good thing because it weeds out people that would do that because there's not any money made for months and months and months and months and months and months. And that weeds out most people. So the first tip is to create at least 100 pages of content. Okay, it shows you serious. The next thing that I have to say is this bad boy right here. And this actually is another thing that it goes without saying, must be done, build branded assets, okay? So build actual branded assets. So like your YouTube channel, Osborne Digital Marketing, hello, that type of stuff. Create branded assets, create things like Reddit, you know, just as many as you can. Create a ton of them, why not? If they're real, legitimate, and you can use them, create them, because that just helps. If there's a link from LinkedIn, if there's a link from Instagram, if there's a link from Facebook, if there's a link from YouTube, you can start to see what I'm getting at. That's a lot of links. That's a lot of authoritative websites that you're taking the time to link into. And like in the video I just explained before, where I've had a look at some PBNs, well, perfect example, they don't have all of that. So of course, Google can sit there and pick that apart and be like, eh, are these guys even real? So make sure that you keep building out, build your branded assets. Now, the other thing will be, and this is something that works particularly well, like honestly, this works particularly well, but it is expensive. It does cost you a little bit more to do. Use PR and Haro links. So PR is your press releases and Haro is your help a reporter out links. Okay, so that's where you can get those links from Forbes and all of that. Now that can skyrocket and rip you out of the sandbox. It's like if you got stuck in the sandbox and an adult was to come along and rip you out. That's exactly what's happening when you get a link from one of those guys. It's fantastic, but it costs money. And does it always work? No, it does not. 
we were fortunate enough to land a pretty good link from a reputable source for a, a client that's in the uh, vacation game. They work in, in that space. And honestly, it helped, but it didn't do what we expected it to do. So are they as powerful as they used to be? I still would assume that they are. And if you get a link from Forbes, that's going to go a long way. But this is the fastest and best way. Just building backlinks is not enough. Build out things that are about your brand. Make it all about your brand, your brand, your brand, your brand. As an example, if you were to go online right now and let's say your website, even use my website as the example, Osborne Digital Marketing has been around for some time, a few years. So there's all of this content out there. Over the years, it's out there everywhere. So you can go back and look at it. I've got a massive footprint, so to speak. But if you are just setting something up, there'll be nothing. There'll be no footprint on Facebook. There'll be no footprint in your Google business profile. There, there won't even be a Google business profile in the early days. And that's the thing. You need to build some age. So if you don't have age, well, what's the next best thing? Creating the content, using the PR and Haro links. Fantastic. And which would tie into the 100 pages again, because you're putting more of a footprint down. So the final thing that I would suggest, all right, let me just grab this uh, bad boy right here, because this is the final thing that I would suggest to you. If you are trying to get out of the Google sandbox, this is what you'll need. This thing right here, this is the final part of the uh, puzzle. So start driving some traffic to your website with paid searches. Now this can be social media and it can be PPC like Google Ads. The reason that you want to use either raw is entirely up to you. To be completely honest, I haven't noticed much of a difference with either or. I personally think the probably the social media stuff's a bit cheaper, okay? But your PPC converts. So at the same time, depending upon what you are, like let's just say you're a plumber, you create Facebook ads, right? Well, the Facebook ads, the likelihood of you converting on a Facebook ad, pretty low and you're paying money for that. But let's jump over to Google ads. The likelihood of you converting drastically goes up. So essentially you're paying for that ad, it's covering itself, okay? And that's why PPC at the start of any campaign is a good idea because as you start to move up with your SEO, you can reduce reduce down your PPC. So that drives traffic to your site. Now that we we all know that click through rates, we all know that all of this traffic interactions with users, all of that's very, very important in the eyes of Google. So getting real users on your website is one way that you can get your website out of the Google sandbox. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now I have a couple of things up here that I wanted to show you. So We've got this powerful technical audit right here that you can, and anyone can do. You can get a free technical audit. And I've been, thankfully, and thank you and everyone for watching this video. I truly, honestly appreciate it. I think YouTube's the sickest thing because it gets people like myself and all around, like you get to learn. And uh, I had a lot of people actually reach out to me and ask if I could make some specific videos. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be focusing a lot more on um, some PBN stuff, so building up some networks, your own networks. But in the meantime, if you have any suggestions, if you have any suggestions about what YouTube video you would like to see, if you'd like to see another video on something different, how to get something else out of a sandbox, I don't know. <laughs> Write it in there, guys. The link for this will be down below. I hope that I've answered the question of how to get the how to get your website out of the Google sandbox. If I have, make sure you hit a like and subscribe, and I'll see you around. Cheers.